does the mysterious number 666 represent? Will the 666 be a microchip? Is the 666 a symbol of Satan? Will 666 have anything to do with Christianity? What does the Bible say regarding? Join us and listen the answer to this question and others at the conference A Mysterious Number 666 from the series The Future World. It is a privilege for me, who speaking is Pastor Pablo Hanger from Washington, D.C., United States, to share with you this, this lecture number eight of this series, The Future World. And today, with this in, in, interesting title, A Mysterious Number, the 666. The number 666 had been a curiosity for many people. At the same time, a number that brings some kind of panic and fear. And it had happened, very interesting curiosi uh, curiosities around the world. In 1989, Nancy and Ronald Reagan, after they finished or moved from the White House, they, were, they received a house that the address was 666 Sun Cloud Road. But because of the number, because of this fear, they decided to change. And they made the process to change to 668 Sun Cloud Road. Not just that, in Chicago, very interesting other experience, a company, a furniture company, that was also in the 666 North Lake Shore Drive, they changed the number, make the process to 680 North Lake Shore Drive. But this had happened in different occasions, not just because of house address. It was a, a road, a freeway 666 in New Mexico, and it was done a process of change in 2003 to the road 491. And this in different occasions, this number we find in different films, especially related with terror, with catastrophe, with persecution. But what is really behind this number? Another interesting experience is several women were very concerned because the delivery date was June 6, 2006, 666. And they were worried that because they didn't want the babies to be related to 666. But this had happened in different other a runner in a competition. He received the number 666 and he said, I will not run with this number. Another is Joe Barton in 2015. He was a representative from a U.S. The legislative court and he requests, he received he was applying for a bill and the name of the number of the bill was 666 and he changed the number of the bill to 7002 and even a flight a flight number 666 from that was going from Copenhagen to Helsinki in Finland it was changed to number uh, 954 how interesting how a number that is mentioned in the bible have been impressed to change so many experiences many people relate the 666 with a, with a microchip because the bible says that it will be in the hand and in the um, forehead and then they say you know a microchip will be put it in your hand in order to control and even it is true, they had already been installing a microchip, but it's really the microchip, the 666. We are going to see, and even people are now talking about the COVID-19 vaccine, and they say, you know, they will put in the vaccine a biochip. That's why never will get the vaccine, because I don't want to be uh, stamped with this 666, because they believe it's the microchip that will be in the vaccine. But had any relation with that? Another religious group, that is worldwide group, they identified the number 666 with representatives of the world unified government in opposition to God. But it's really governments related with 666 or is something different than 666? It was even a church, a Congolese church, that they say that the 666 was related with the www the world web, web uh, wide web that we put when we search in the internet that that was the 66 because the www corresponds to 666 
Uh, but are really those six? What does the Bible really say about the 666? We found that in the book of Revelation, and we are going to read because we need to go back to the Word of God. There is mentioned the 666 in the book of Revelation chapter 13. And we need to see what really God says and take the characteristics that are mentioned in the Bible and not speculate about this number 666, but go exactly to the specification, the characteristic that the Word of God mentioned. And it's mentioned there, Revelation 13, 14 to 18, it says, And deceive them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had powers to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image of the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that a man, as many as will not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Put attention, worship. I should do here with the persecution, with the worship. And he caused all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand and in their foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that, the, that had the mark on the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that had understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. And his number is 603 score and 6. 666. But this mentioned here is the number of a man. We cannot change the characteristics that are mentioned in the Bible. And here we find seven characteristics interesting in just those texts. So not are not the only one because we just read the section of Revelation chapter 13. Here it mentioned that is the deceiving power is related to a power called the beast and the image of the beast is related to a commercial limitation with the death penalty. The reason, specific reason for the persecution is because they do not accept worship, a certain worship. If we pay attention, this is the real reason for the problem. It's related to the mark that is received in the hand or in the forehead. And the mark is related to the name of the beast or the number of his name, which is 666. And it's mentioned, it is a man's number. Let's try to go and analyze some of the characteristics here. We mentioned that the major problem here is the request of worship to the beast or the image of the beast. When we go to the book of Revelation, put attention, Revelation chapter 4, verse number 11, Revelation 4, 11, it says there, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure they are and were created. What is mentioned in this text? Who is the only one that is worthy to receive glory and power and also honor and worship? Here is the only that is honored to, worthy to receive the, the power and worship is the God of heaven, is God. Revelation chapter 22, in verse number eight and nine, it says they are, and I, John, saw these things and hear them. And when I he, he, had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel, which showed me these things. Then say he unto me, the angel to John, See thou do it not, for I am that fellow servant, and of thy brethren the prophets, and of them which keep the saying of this book, worship God. According with the description that we just found in this text, we found very clear that neither angels should be worshipped, and these are beings that are pure and they are perfect. Can we worship than human beings that make mistakes? Can we worship objects? Here we see, and even is mentioned is the number of a man, is not the microchip, is not the barcode. And even we cannot worship a man. We need to be very careful, but let us look a little bit deeper in this beast that has this number 666. 
In order to go deep, we need to go back to Revelation chapter 13. And we read verse number 1 until 2. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horn ten crowns, and upon his head the name of a blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were like the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Here, just in these two texts, we find several characteristics here. With the, when we go to the Bible, the Bible speaks in different occasions about beasts, especially is mentioned also in the book of Daniel. And in Daniel chapter 7, in prophecy, beast is not related to an animal, that we are going to see an animal fighting against God that requires worship, that has several heads, even though in several religions around the world, they worship um, animals with, um, in mythology with different heads, and things, especially in Asia. But here is not related with that. In prophecy, the Bible explains. The book of Daniel, chapter 7, verse 23, it says, Does he say, the four beasts shall be the four kingdoms upon the earth, which shall be divided from all kingdoms? Here we see, that beast is related then with kingdom, with the power that will govern the earth, that will control the earth. But let's go to another element. The beast is coming out of the sea. What is the meaning of that? We go back to Revelation chapter 17, verse number 15. It says, And he said unto me, The waters which thou sowest, where the whore seated, are peoples, and multitudes and nations and tongues. This implies that the power developed where there are many multitudes, people and nation control, then that this power or this beast that represents the power will control many people when it's not coming for a place that we're isolated, just no, no much population, but this is in the middle of all, where all, all the nation with the major development are. It's also mentioned here that it's having seven heads and ten horns, ten crowns, and blasphemous names. Let's go back to Daniel. Daniel chapter 7, verse number 24, it says the meaning of the horns. And the ten horns out of his kingdom are ten kings that shall arise. Here we see, and it's also similar in the book of Daniel, heads or horns means division of the kingdom of that uh, beast is division of that power. But interesting here, when we relate this to, and it's not just that, this piece of Revelation chapter 13 had another characteristic. It's like a leopard, like a bear, and like a lion. The same beast are mentioned in the same chapter 7 that I'm just showing to you the meanings because Daniel chapter 7 explains more details. And Daniel chapter 7 mentioned and it's a parallel from Daniel chapter uh, 2, this describing here the world empires. This, they are Daniel chapter 7, there are four beasts. One is like a lion, similar like Daniel chapter 13. The second is like a bear, similar to that, uh, Revelation 13. The third is like a, a leopard. And the fourth is the fourth empire, and this is Babylon, the first world empire, followed by the bear that was representing Medo-Persia, followed by the uh, leopard that was representing Greek, and the four beasts on Daniel 7 was represented the Roman Empire. And these four beasts from Daniel 7 was having ten horns. And interesting that from this ten horn, it came another horn that breaks three horns. Ten minus three, how many is? Seven. How many head was having the beast in Revelation 13? Seven. We see here a parallel in the characteristic, in the numbers. And in the beginning were ten. How many horns was having the Revelation? It's ten. Ten crowns. Why? Because after the Roman Empire uh, fall down, what happened? The Roman Empire was not conquered by other nations, but it just got dissolved and divided in the 10 different nations of Europe that exist until today. 
But after this division, what happened with the Roman Empire? Do we find a power that is following up there? Let's continue reading that we may find more characteristics, but we already identified that had to do then with the follow-up history of the Roman Empire, this, this beast of Revelation 13. We're going back to Daniel, uh, Revelation chapter 13. Now we read from verse number 3 to 6. I say, And I saw one of his head, and it is were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. And they worship the dragon, which give power unto the beast, and they worship the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. Here we see this characteristic clear that is talking about worship and is talking about blasphemy against God. Then it has to do with religion. There's no other issue. This power is also involved with religion. And it's mentioned that will rule, uh, have an authority of 42 months. Put attention, 42 months. He will be wounded, but which after a certain time will be healed and will get um, power and will be worshipped by the kings of the earth. He's also having a mouse speaking great things and blasphemy against God and against the sanctuary. What does this all mean? Let's start finding what was the power that ruled 42 months. But again, as the beast means kingdom, this is also a prophetical period of time. And when we go to prophetical period of time, there is a characteristic. In the book of Ezekiel, we are going to see the Bible needs to explain us everything. Ezekiel chapter uh, 4, verse number 6. Ezekiel chapter 4, verse number 6, it says, And when thou hast accomplished them, lie again on thy right side, and thou shalt bear the iniquity of the house of Judah forty days. I have appointed thee each day for a year. Okay, here we have a rule of time in prophecy in which every day equals one year. Then how many days are in 42 months? In the biblical calendar, every month has 30 days. Then if we multiply 30 days times 42 months, it gives us 1,260 days or years, according with the prophecy. You can make the calculation. Take your cell phone. 30 times 42, you get 1,260. And these were days, but because one day is one year, that is 1,260 years. This is a long period. Now, what happened in Europe that lasted so long after the Roman Empire? Something is in history. We cannot erase the history. This history, we go back, we find the register there. There was a power in Europe that overcome the Herulls, the Vandals, and the Ostrogoths. And they managed, they destroyed the Ostrogoth that was the, the last resistance that this power had in the year 538. 538. If we calculate 538, and we uh, calculate this 1,260, counting of this 1,538, uh, we come to the year 1,798. What happened in that year? This is a period, clear period of the Middle Age. Who was ruling in the Middle Age? In Europe, there, that was the ancient world, the old world, it was the, the different kings. But who was ruling over the kings? There was one power that was controlling, that was the papal power, the papacy. And it's interesting, it was the papacy that destroyed the Ostrogoth in 538, and was the pope that was uh, the, um, taking the power in the year 1798. It was the General Beltier under Napoleon Bonaparte uh, orders 
that he was stopped. It was taken into prison and the, the properties of the Pope were confiscated. Then who is this beast? Who is this power that is ruling, that is coming from the sea, that is ruling these 42 men? There is no other power. These 42 uh, months equivalent to 1,600 years. Here we see very clear, we follow the sequences in Europe after the Roman Empire, the only power that is, it was the papacy power, the, the power that was a mix of religions with the political power, it was controlling in the Middle Age the whole kings. The whole kings, there are several interesting stories how the king need to answer to the Pope. But despite of being arrested and having his property confiscated, the papacy returned to both religious and political power. And today, the Pope is a very influenced person all around the world. It was not until 1929 that Benito Mussolini, leading Italy, signed a document handing over 44 hectares to the papacy and granting his, his political power again. Today, papacy is very influential power in all around the world, admitting both in his political uh, power as well as in religious authority and followed by kings and rulers of the world. Exactly as the prophecies say. It was mentioned there that he will be wounded, but his wound will be healed. And this is what happened. And the earth will worship him. Does not request the Pope also worship, but Interesting too, this beast, it was having a mouth that speak blasphemy. I have a question now. Can be that the Pope is speaking blasphemy? He speak about God. He speak about peace. But put attention what the Bible says. In the book of John, chapter 10, verse number 33, it says, The Jew answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but, but for blasphemy, and because that thou being a man, make it thyself God. Wow! When a man takes the authority of God, what is he doing? He's doing blasphemy it's here. Blasphemy is to assume the name of God. It is to take away the authority that belongs to God. Let's look to this close. For example, the Pope, what is one of the major names that the Pope is no internationally. It's not that he requests to be called the Holy Father. In Matthew, the Word of God, is mentioned very clear that this name cannot be claimed by the man. It says in Matthew 23, 9, And call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. We are not talking about the, the biological father, but we are talking about here about spiritual father, whom God Mention here clearly that no one should be called father spiritually but God. Here we see that he is taking one name that is belong to God. And this is blasphemy considering the Bible. Let's go to another, Ephesians, another name that the Pope is taking for himself. Ephesians chapter 5, verse number 23. Ephesians 5, 23. The word of the Lord says, For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Is not the Pope claiming to be the head of the Christian church? Here we see another. He is taking the authority that belongs to Christ. We see that the Pope has seen blasphemy against Christ by assuming a name that does not belong to it. I'm just reading the word of God, and I just means reading what the Lord says. But another one. Mark, the Bible is very clear. When I just mentioned saying what the Bible says, Mark chapter 2, verse number 7, Mark chapter 2, verse number 7 say, Why does this man that speak blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God only? Oh, does not claim the Pope also to have the authority to forgive sins? To whom which only this belongs to God. That means it's another. And he has mentioned very class, clear, blasphemy. This is the Bible that is speaking to us. Dear friends, here we see another characteristic fulfilling exactly. The Pope asked for the people to, to worship him. People kissed the hand of the Pope and also bowed down before the Pope. 
Is this correct? What is interesting is that the Pope is asking to worship that even the angels cannot receive the worship. We have already seen that this is also wrong. It is precisely the great problem mentioned in Revelation 13, the wrong worship. It requires worship. And there will be a group that will not accept this worship and will go through challenges. But there is a victory promise for the people of God. The, promise, the problem is here that uh, the beast is receiving also the power from the dragon. Who is the dragon? The Bible mentions clear the dragon is Satan. Then how can it be here we see a conflict and we see also a mix because the Pope is talking about God, is bringing a worship, but many things are not according to the word of, the word of God and even is considered by God a blasphemy. Here we see that this power is not coming from God. Very clear. We need to be very careful. God's enemy has always presented himself in ways that seems good so that he can deceive humanity. The only way we can guard ourselves from being deceived is by studying the revelation of the Word of God, this holy book. This is our counsel. This is our guide. And we need to be very careful that we may not get in wrong direction. Revelation, we continue. It's more details here. Revelation chapter 13, verse number 7 to 10. We continue seeing here the characteristic. It says, And it was given unto him to make war with the saints, and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that kill with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Here, what do we find? that he is making wars against the same. First characteristic. Second, he has power over every race and people and tongue and nation. And we see that the power of the Pope is growing. On those who worship this beast or the Pope or this system, their name will not be written in the book of life. Let's see the meaning of this first. When we go to Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 1, and it's not just here, it's mentioned in several texts of the Bible, especially by the Apostle Paul. Here say the following, Ephesians 1.1, 1, 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Then who are the saints? Here mentioned clear. They are the saints. They are the, the, the faithful are the saints. The saints then are the people of God, are the, the believers, those that are faithful to the Lord, not those that speak about God. No, and we are not talking about just apparently a shine of a Christian. No, we need to be sincere. And this is the revelation of God. We need to be faithful. He had to do, to be a saint, had to do with the faithfulness to Jesus Christ. When we go to the history, what happened in the Middle Age? What happened in this period? This 1260 years, more than 50 million died by the Crusades, by the Inquisition that we were led by the Pope. And I'm not just bringing something that is secret. This, it is openly. This had been many dies, millions died by the Inquisition. The crusades that were done, the war that were done against the Waldenses. Who are the Waldenses? We have until today the Waldenses, even in small groups. They were people that were faithful to the Word of God in the north of Italy. They even uh, transcribe the Bible in those days. They were not printing press by hand, distribute. They even translate the Bible in the people's language, in common language, in order for the people to be able to read and to find the real teaching of the Word of God. And because of this, this was the mistake that they were doing because they were showing the true the divine revelation. They were persecuted. John Paul II, he apologized in the year 2004 for the horrors of the Inquisition. People died in the most terrible ways. 
mistreated in terrible ways to how they were killed in the Inquisition. In the year 2015, Pope Francis, in behalf of the Catholic Church, he apologized for the persecution made to the Waldenses. But not just the Waldenses, there were several people, there were the uh, different people, even the, the Protestant Church were persecuted in the uh, 15th, 16th centuries, and even before when they were the beginning of the, the Hus and Hieronymus, that they stood for the Word of God, they were even killed, and, and millions. But they apologize. But I want to mention something. Here the Pope apologize what they recognize were the mistake of the Church. But they have not changed the doctrines. And that was the reason why these people were persecuted. They remain in the same principle, in the same teaching. They have changed the strategy. But the worship, the question is, does God accept this worship that is the same for that was before? Revelation, put attention what the Lord says. Revelation chapter 20, verse number 15 says, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. And we say those that worship the beast, their name will not be written in the book of life. That means, based on this text, that they will be destroyed. But how can they be destroyed that they are worshiping God in the way what they understand? But it's opposite to the word of God. And God rejects this half worship, yes, we are talking here very clear when I need to be sincere and open to you because I want to help you. And I cannot allow the people to continue in this halfway if I know that God is rejecting what God has revealed. This 666 or this abyss that is related with the 666 is not a mystery. This is a clear power revealing the word of God. And we need to be very careful. But what about the 666? Revelation 13, 18, we found there what is mentioned about the 666. Here is wisdom. Let him that had understanding count the number of the beast, for it is a number of a man, and his number is 603 score and 6. 666. Six, six. But the Bible is telling us here to calculate the number of his name, and it is a man then it's not the microchip, it's not the barcode, and it's not the politica, politician, because he is talking about a worship, and a worship that takes the name of God, blasphemy God. Here, what are, interesting, let's call it like this. In the ancient times, the Greeks, the Hebrews, the language, and also the Latin, the letters also were having numerical values. What is the language of the Pope? It's Latin. And in Latin, the, the letters also have a numerical values. One of the ancient names of the Pope, that is one of the ancient, is in different documents, is Vicarius Philidae. Even it was in the crown, the triple crown of the Pope. What is the meaning is, is Vicarius Philidae, is Vicar of the Son of God, even a title that don't belong to the Pope. This is who is the representative of the Son of God. It's the Holy Spirit, it's not the Pope. Here we see, and if we count this name, V, well, you know, is five in the number. I, you know, is had to do with one. C is 100. Vicarius, here see V5, I1, C100, AR0, I is one again, U is also similar like V, 5, and S0 is 112. Philly is F0, I1, L50, I1, I again 1 is 53, and they, D is 500, is 0, I, I is 1, 501. If we add 112, 53, and 501, all these numbers, Vicarius, Philly, they, we come to Six, six, six. We need to count the number of the of this man. It's mentioned there, and it's not just one pope. This is the system that was fighting this forty-two months. This forty-two months, there were several popes. The Bible here gives us clear revelation. But it's even one more. I want to mention one more. Remember that had this beast had seven heads. Look at here what is mentioned, Revelation chapter seventeen, verse number nine. And here is the man which had wisdom. 
The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman seated. Because here is another beast mentioned in Revelation 13, when it's a woman, even this woman is called Babylon. Babylon means confusion. Sitting in the beast with the same characteristic of the beast of Revelation 13. And what does this seven uh, health represent? The seven hill, which is in the history, the city of the seven hill. It's not the city of Rome. This is fulfilling again exactly what the Bible says. And what, what is what's happening in Rome? What is, what is in Rome? That is the seat, the headquarter of the papal system. Pope Francis, an interesting also element. In these last days, in October 20, what did he do from the year 2020 to what we are now? He gathered all the leaders of the different religious organizations and he did a meeting and request all of them to sign a document requesting for the peace, for the world peace. What he is trying? The Pope is trying to invite all the churches, to lead all the churches with this goal of peace. It looks a wonderful goal, but is he mentioned the peace, bringing the word of God in high, bringing the principle of God in, in high? Is not. He's just trying to put, take the leadership and request that the churches recognize his authority, but not the authority of God and not the authority of the revelation of the word of God. That's why, dear friends, very important. The last conflict will have to do with worship. To whom we worship? In which way do we worship God? It's not the same to do half worship. Half worship. God does not accept this half worship in the name of God, but doing things that are not approved by God, that God does not accept. Revelation 14, it makes especially appeal to the right worship. Revelation 14, and I want to read to you verse number uh, 9 to 12. It says there, And the third angel followed, saying, followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand. You see what we read in the same Revelation 13. The saints shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angel and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever. And they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receive the mark of his name. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandment of God and the faith of Jesus. Here is being in two groups. One is the angel is saying with a loud voice, be careful, don't worship that beast. Don't worship the system, this wrong worship. And he's mentioned this, this uh, mark. God also had a mark. We are going to see this in the future, but the image also had the mark. And it's a wrong system of worship. And it's a wrong characteristic that is coming also from the same system, from the papacy. Maybe you have born in a system that you consider that was bringing you to God. But here we see that the mix have God and have not the will of God is not accepted to the Lord. And I make you a call. What do we need to do? is prepare ourselves that our name be written in the book of life and that we may not lose the eternity. And if we want to be written in the book of life, we need to worship God as is mentioned here. Here is the patience of the same. Here are they that keep the commandment of God and have the faith of Jesus. We need to believe in Jesus. But that doesn't mean say, Hallelujah, Jesus, I believe in Jesus. And then the life is just confusion. No. We need to believe in the Lord, but also accept the teaching of the Lord Jesus and the teachings of the Word of God and the commandments of the Lord. All ten commandments, this is written in the Bible, because even the papacy have changed the commandment, even teaching the catechism commandments that you do not find in the Bible. Even the Catholic Bible are not find those, those ten commandments that the church teach. Go to Exodus 20, you will see that. What we need to do is follow the Lord. My dear friend, if there had been confusion, we need to ask the Lord, Lord, forgive us and help us to do right.
if we have maybe not understand it well. And even the churches that mix with the Pope, we see here is not just the beast, but the beast is doing an image of the beast. This had to do with a system very close to the old system of the Pope. And this had to do with the Protestant churches uniting with the system of the papacy, working together. This we cannot do. We need to work with the Word of God. I want to pray with you today. I want to ask that the Lord may help us, that we may be ready to meet the Lord Jesus, that we may be faithful. And even we go through challenges, because here is mentioned it will come time of challenges. But we do not worship what is wrong. We remain worship God in faithful and in truth. Let's bow our faces and let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the revelation of your word. We have seen very clear that you had given many characteristics of these 666. That is not a mysterious, a secret number, but you had revealed the characteristic of this beast that is current, this number too. Lord, help us not to be mixed with the confusion of this world, with this Babylon that is confusion. But help us, Lord, to follow you, to follow the word, and to be these people, these saints, this group of believers that have the faith in Jesus, but also keep the commandment of Jesus, that are surrendered fully to the will of God. Lord, forgive our sins. Forgive the sins of our friends that are hearing if they had been confused or misled that we may understand what is written in thy word, Lord. We thank you for the revelation of the scripture. We pray all this with the forgiveness of our sins, and we pray in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Thank you for taking the time to be with us. I invite you to join us again tomorrow for another topic of this series, The Future World. May God bless you.